let's have a look at some different types of annual plants. Hello, I'm Rosie Hardy. This is Rosie Hardy Gardening. Let's get the definition of annuals out of the way. So an annual plant is something that you grow from seed. It grows, it flowers, it goes back to seed, and then that plant dies. Basically, it has one season of growth, and that is it. Any other plants that you see of that particular variety that grow the next year are self-seeded. A lot of people get confused about the term annual. I keep on being asked, oh, it's an annual, so it'll come back every year. No, one season, that's it, the plant dies. Okay, so that's quite blunt, but that's the easiest way to explain it. I decided this time, let's have a look at some of the more interesting and slightly unusual annuals that there are out there. By unusual, maybe not so often grown. They may not be unusual to people who live in those areas where they happen to be their native wild flowers. But for us here in the UK, these do not grow as natural native flowers. And therefore we're utilizing them in the garden to give us a little bit of different color, a pop of color, something slightly different shape. So let's start off with this one, which is the tallest one. And this one is Persicaria orientalis. Now Persicaria orientalis goes by a couple of names, but I do rather like the common name that it has, which is called Kiss Me Over the Garden Gate, which is really quite fun. Now this has really strong stems, huge big leaves on it. And wherever the leaves are attached around the stem here, you get a lovely red marking. So it looks looks as though there are notches going all the way up. Now this plant can get up to 1.5 meters tall, that's over five feet. And when it gets up to that tall height, it has these amazing pink tassel flowers. So these are just starting, they will go over and be tassel and they're a beautiful dark pink. So right up here at one meter 50, looking fantastic. It's a brilliant annual for the back of the border or slightly fronter, a statement plant. And it's just going to stay there. And then when you want to collect seed, just look out for seed that is maturing on the plant, collect it, and you can set it again. Now this is probably a hardy annual, although I would always start this off in the garden. It depends on where you are. Further north in the UK, you are not going to get it self-seeding or very unlikely because because it'll just be a little bit too cold for it. So that is a brilliant plant and a good, tall, interesting annual, Persicaria orientalis. Let's stay with the slightly taller ones and you can have this, Dorcas carota. Now this is one that we do have in the UK growing out there. This is the annual carrot and this is brilliant, but do be aware it can self seed a huge amount. So you've just got to be wary of where you put it. I personally have this in my gravel garden and I just dig out what I don't want. It's quite interesting. One year I'll have a lot of one annual, another year I'll have a lot of another annual. I think it just depends on whether I remember to dead head or not. So this has beautiful umbiliferary heads on it. It's going to have more here and more here. It is very very obvious when it's coming into seed and you can give it a cut back and you'll get lower flower coming off it. Because it's related to the carrot family, it's got a taproot. That taproot will not survive. So again, this is a true annual. It's going to come up, die back down, self seed all over the place. So that is another good one. It's a white flower with a little bit of a pink tint to the bud and then it opens up to being a white umbiliferary flower. Dorcas carota. Now there are traditional things like cosmos. I can't get away from the fact that I do love cosmos, those wonderful big open flowers. You can get them in all sorts of colors. I know this should have been planted out by now, but it won't really matter. It'll flower a little bit later. All of these things here are gonna go into a really big annual tub for me. Um, and then I will collect seed from them because basically they are my seed factory. So these are really good. The Cosmos, you can get shorter ones, you can get taller ones. I do have to say, I prefer the taller forms. Flowers are around about this size. Anything from yellow, white, pink, cerises, really great for a ping of color in the late 
summer because that's when they're naturally going to be coming into flower. If you want them a bit more bushy, you can pinch out the top and they will bush out far more. If you want them taller, just leave them. Let them grow how they want to grow. So that is just a normal cosmos. Beautiful foliage on this. And again, the same with the sweet pea. This sweet pea is um, Lathyrus machicana. Yes, it's going a little bit yellow because I haven't fed it. Again, it needs to get into a pot with a bit of food. But Lathyrus machicana are the beautiful two-toned species one that a lot of the sweet peas that you grow in your garden were originally bred from. So this is a great form. It's that sort of beautiful burgundy colour with blue violet colour and it's really nice and the perfume is fantastic and I tend to like to let these go into a container and then scramble up the other plants or tumble down and I will pinch them out and then remember deadhead 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 if you don't deadhead sweet peas and they go to seed you lose the flower so deadheading is essential when you're growing a sweet pea Lathyrus machucana. Now we go on to some which are a little bit new and I don't have a plant of these two. Um, this is Orlea grandiflora and as you can see this has come from a plant so around about this is another carrot relative it has a tap root and it flowers very quickly and sets seed very quickly so on the same stem you've got seed that is set you've got young bud and you've got more flower coming through. They make wonderful, bushy, strong, wiry stems. They hold themselves up well. This is something that's a hardy annual, so it will drop seed in the autumn. It will then germinate and then it will be flowering earlier. If you want it later flowering, they just sow some in the spring and sow some late spring and you will get continuity of the plants because each individual plant does not last for very long. So basically it will flower itself, set seed and then die. And then you'll get another ones coming through. But this is a fabulous plant, the Orlea grandiflora, because it's got these beautiful larger petals on the outside with the smaller umbelifery in the center there. So that is a great one to try. Also, in my little cut flower bowl here, I've got two different colours of nigella. This is Love in the Mist. Love in the Mist is a fabulous thing and I allow it to sell seed around in my gravel. I have two tones of blue. This is a very, very pale, almost white and on the reverse, it's got beautiful colours. And then this one slightly larger flowered with the lovely blue there. And they are just fabulous. They just waft around in the gravel at the moment, pops of blue coming up all over the place, and then they will finish and die back down again. I love these, love in the mist. Now the last one that is in here, this is a little bit of a sad story. So I decided that I would see if I could find something that I've not grown before. I have grown annual lupins, but not these particular varieties. So this one is Lupinus luteus, luteus meaning yellow and it's a beautiful, strong yellow. Now this flower was attached to the top of here two days ago when I bought it, it was in bud. Then it gradually opened up and then I went out when I was doing my watering because I haven't got around to planting these yet and I saw that the flower head was like this. Oh yes, a little slug or snail had crept up, chewed it, and oh no, but that doesn't matter because it's got lots of buds still to come. So I will still get this flowering. I'm going to move it to a different location where it won't get attacked by the slugs and the snails. But it just means that I know that if you put it somewhere shady where you know there are lots of slugs and snails, they're going to go and eat it. So this needs to go out into a drier location where there aren't so many. But isn't this the most fabulous, beautiful, dark yellow? And it is highly scented absolutely beautiful sweet scent. So if you've got these growing, a lot of them, as you walk past, that scent will come up to you. So this is going to get to 60 centimetres tall. It won't be very bushy. Um, it is a plant from Iberia, so it's due, you know, it's something that likes a Mediterranean climate, so slightly freer draining. Really, really lovely thing. So that one is Lupinus luteus. Then I have another one, and this one is Lupinus pilosus. 
pilosus because it's got very, very hairy stems. And then this is blue flowered. Now this was in exactly the same spot as that, but obviously the stem was so hairy, the slugs didn't like it. So brilliant from my point of view. This is known as the blue lupin, and this is a native to the South Mediterranean areas, all around that area there. In Crete is the most common lupin that you will see growing out in the field. So this again is something that likes that free draining, hot, dry, sunny. So all of these are gonna go into a hot, dry, sunny container with a bit of extra grit put in so that I get them flowering and I then get my seeds so that I can then grow them next year. But this is going to have beautiful, lovely, strong gentian blue flowers on it, really cracking plant. So that one is Lupinus pilosa. And then the last one I've got here is the bunny tails. This is Lagerus ovatus. Now I've not grown this as an annual grass. I have grown other annual grasses, but not this particular one. And this one is one that doesn't get very tall. It is a dwarf grass, but it's known as bunny tails. And it's something that the children absolutely adore because they do literally look like little tiny hairy bunny tails and it'll put masses of these head, seed heads on and you can collect them and dry them. It's just another different plant that you could put in a dry area. It will sell seed as well, but you're probably better off collecting the seed and then sowing it. And I would sow it in the spring. You'll get much more success then. So this is a really great thing. It's not going to get much more than 20 centimetres tall and then be covered in these beautiful bunny tails. So that is just something slightly different. That is not just about colour, it's about height, it's about texture, it's about different colours, so it's about pops of colour. But also from my point of view, I'm only growing a few because these are my seed factories. So sometimes that's a good way of getting plants. You don't have to get masses. Okay, in the first year, you'll just have the one. But then after that, you've got your seed and you can sow it. And what I suggest with a lot of these things is sow some early, some a bit later, and then some again after that. So do three batches of sowing. Start maybe somewhere around about March, then April, and then May. You can even sow in June because it's amazing how quickly these annuals will go, right, I need to grow, I need to get going, because that's what they want to do. That is their aim in life, is to go from seed to seed as quickly as they can. And that is what an annual does. Seed to seed, then that plant has gone. Hope this gave you some interest and makes you want to look at different annuals to just pop in your garden in different places. Thank you very much for watching and please do subscribe to the channel. If you want to watch another video of mine, YouTube thinks this one is perfect for you.